So what the light meter does, it will uh, measure the light in your surroundings to different values. So as I move around my sensor, so now it's closer to the window, it's going to give me a different value. If I do it in the shadow, you see it's going to reduce, okay? So when I have it, it's measuring only Lux because it's a cheaper version, but Lux is good. We can always convert it. So you can see if I get closer, it says 1. 1 means it's the value is too high. For that, I need to push the orange area. So at the bottom, I will push this. And it will now measure a bit more. If I keep pushing, it's going to multiply by 10. And then it's going to multiply by 100. Okay. Now you probably notice it's brighter on the left side because there's an actual light on. So if I measure directly on the light. Okay. So let's see. So it says about 500, maybe 550. I could also click hold. Okay. So if I'm clicking hold, now it's not going to move at all. So I can have a look at it, right? I can look at it, take down the notes I need. So it says 571 uh, lux. If I multiply it by 10, because it has a zero, so we, we don't necessarily have to go that far, right? So if I do this, it's going about 500 lux. Now, if I aim it outside, Closer to the window, maybe. Let's have a look. You know, it's going to start. You know, it's re reaching the 2000. Now, if I were to do it outside, I did it already and I didn't like the video, which is why I'm doing it in front of the computer. Uh, it will reach uh, around 27,000, maybe 30,000 now because the light's stronger. So what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose of, of using a light meter is you're able to measure the environment. So you're doing, say you're outside, you want some references, you want to kind of remember the luminance. So you can take your, take this sensor, you can put it in the brightest area and it will give you the value for it. So rather than trusting things online or guessing, it will give you an accurate information about it, right? And you do the same in the shadow. So you, then you get the average, right? You get the ratio. How is it? Is it four by one ratio? Is it four by three ratio? What happens over time? It teaches you about lighting, and it teaches you uh, how to go on about how to measure all of this, and also if it's correct what you're seeing and finding online. Better yet, if you take your photos and measure at the same time before or after. You can then take the notes and connect it to your photo. So when you're using your own references or if you're working in a company and you have references, maybe you go and take your own photos for your references. If you do this on top of it, you're going to get quite accurate readings and information to have a realistic lighting on top of the PBR, on top of everything else. Yes, it is a bit more demanding workflow. But over time, at least it will teach you and your eye to be more trustworthy because you can't really trust memory, but you could do trust your ability to understand value and how bright and dark something is so this is a doctor meter it's a, one of the cheaper variants i think it's like 30 bucks 40 bucks depending on where you order it from so definitely something to look into definitely something to consider and definitely something you want to try out and then you could actually just so let's say you measured 600, which is, you know, it's normal. This was a 7.5, which is the average I have in my room. <coughs> well, let's say I measured around 70,000 earlier today in my room. So it's not being able to convert that in my app. Okay, so for that reason, we'll just go 7,000 lux in EV. And we'll try and find a basically a EV converter. So we want the lux to EV converter. Okay. 
can also use a table that's the one I was using um, so here it says around 28,000 so that would be EV 13.5 which is a uh, correct so basically what you can do then is let's say you are moving around and you're doing something in unreal or whatever so in unreal you would do you would play with this and i'm explaining just the general point of direction this is obviously more complicated you would have to do my lighting course and mentorship to really uh, nail this correctly but ev100 you could do like 7.5 and then you could look at the light so it looks as it would like your photography or when you were measuring or 13.5 for the the early morning outside in the unity you can go to ev100 and again, I don't recommend using these settings unless you're really experienced or you understand what you're doing because it can get complicated and you can see it has trouble understanding it. So you, you do need to understand it yourself that you are in fact doing it correctly. Now, when you're doing all of this, you are generally trying to make the most out of it. Um, so with that, I mean, there's different processes. So as I said earlier, probably is... This is very common for cinematographer and photographer, which is why uh, it's a good idea to learn all of the other stuff. So you go out and let's say you take a photo, right? So let's say you take a photo. Something's wrong with my keyboard. Photo London. Right, and I don't know. Let's say you took a photo and you want to know and you saved all the settings for this. So Unreal Exposure, I'm just going to use this one just to quickly show you uh, outside. So you could use all of these auto exposure settings, sure, which I do teach in my course um, and which is connected to what I'm talking about. But you could also use the camera settings to get the exposure so this would be the camera setting you see here and it's the same thing with with the unity one um unity physically physically correct camera physically correct camera and it's the same thing here you can use in use the settings now i do this quite often if i have my own photography or if I go into say a site, so I say photo, something definitely wrong with my edge, photo reality site. Let's say I go maybe, maybe here, or we'll have to see if we're lucky. Uh, maybe this one. Okay, so, in certain images and certain sites as well, you'll find the aperture, the ISO, the aspect ratio, the focal length and everything. And you can then put it into your camera basically, and it will then expose it more or less correctly. So you would technically be skipping this process, but when you combine all of it, you end up with a bit more accurate process, essentially, okay. You're, you'll end up with, um, Basically, you're ending up with a more thorough way to make sure that you're doing the correct lighting. But more importantly, you're learning. You're learning to see and understand the bigger picture if something's incorrect and correct. And you can use this information to improve your workflow and present your work in a bit more accurate way. So hopefully this video was useful. It's a very short video, hopefully. And it kind of gives you uh, ideas and, and way of working um, without necessarily joining my my lighting course or mentorship. Of course, if you want to get more into detail, detail, feel free to join my Discord, feel free to join my community and learn more, or you could always join the, the course and mentorship to really dig deep over the six months of time you have with me personally. Thank you for watching and have a good day.